Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to bring the meeting of the Board of Supervisors back to order. I know we have on the agenda that we're going to now take up some redevelopment things before we take up the issue of the uh, zoning change and the special use, uh, special plan area for Lampa. <coughs> but I've been told that there's a request to postpone or some other request on the Lampa issues. That's items. Let me make sure I get them for the public so that you can hear this. Uh, 29. Uh, be 29C and 29D would get continued. Continued. Uh, so, <coughs> if it's okay with the board, I'd like to take it those those two items immediately out of order to to listen to the uh, applicant who I think is going to suggest that we not take this up today, and I'll see what they have to say. Mike, come on up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. For the record, Mike Raley with Rubicon Design Group representing the applicant, uh, Blackstone Development. Um, yes, we would like to request a continuance to allow us to hold a neighborhood meeting to see if we can't work with the neighbors to resolve some outstanding issues related to the access to the property. This is kind of an open-ended? Open-ended for you. Yeah, I, I think we should leave it open-ended but since we don't know what the outcome of that meeting will be yet. So, All right. All right. We'll see where it goes then. Is that all right with you, Mr. Dan? We okay if I just say, you know, based upon that, we're going to pull items 29C and 29D for future consideration? That is perfectly fine, Mr. Mayor. All right. Then unless there's an objection by the board, uh, we will pull those items for future consideration, and we'll see where it goes. Okay? Thanks. All right. All right. Very good. Okay. Let's... Uh, would, would the public, when you guys, I know there's some neighborhoods back there. Could you let everybody know that we, what's going on here so that they don't show up here in about another half hour and say, hey, we're. Do, <laughs> all right. <laughs> it's done. Well, okay. I know, I know you were waiting for us to send out a message that we've already approved it, and so. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That opens up the afternoon a little bit. All right. Go back and take a nap. <laughs> All right. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to pass the gavel to the Supervisor Abound, who is the Chair of Redevelopment. All right. Go. Thank you, Bob. Um, I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Re Redevelopment Authority and let the record reflect that we have a quorum. Um, and on to item 23, public comment. Is there any public comment at this time? Seeing I no like, public. I'd just like to make one comment, <laughs> and that is that I think since the mayor is now not the chairman, I can say that I think I've been supplanted today as the court jester here. <laughs> Thank you, John, for that. Um, item 24, uh, everyone had a chance to read the minutes of May 21st. I move to approve um, the minutes of the Carson City Redevelopment Authority for May 21st, 2018, with the addition of a line approving the a date of approval, or uh, uh, providing for a date of approval. Motion is second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. All right. 
Um, item 25A, for possible action to make a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors regarding the expenditure of $32,200 from the fiscal year 2019 Redevelopment Revolving Fund to support various arts and culture special events in support of the Redevelopment District as recommended by the Cultural Commission. So, Mark, are you going to take us through this or Lee? Can I make a disclosure before you sure. check? In the past, I have I have kind of stayed away from my high jazz band because my wife was on that board. That's no longer the case, so I'll be okay. voting. Okay. Good afternoon, Mark Salinas, Arts and Culture Coordinator for the record. Um, Exciting day here today. Yes, as you know, uh, $25,000 from the Redevelopment Fund has been allocated for fiscal 1819 for arts and culture uh, events in the redevelopment districts. Um, in fact, those are uh, 25,000 has been earmarked for the next four fiscal years uh, as of March of 2017, and I'm grateful uh, for this. Um, for the Board of Supervisors and Redevelopment to, to act up upon this because as my arrival here in Carson City was, these were actually uh, zeroing out over the next four years. This $25,000 allows the Cultural Commission to make recommendations for visual art, music, and theater. Um, I'm happy to say uh, our last uh, round of applicants, um, we received 11 applications. Um, Last fiscal year, we received seven. The year before that, we received four. So let's work our way back up. Um, with those four applications, we had one new applicant. Last year, with those seven applications, we had two new applicants. And this year, with 11 applications, we have five new applicants and one returning applicant. So in responding to this trend, and the um, extended opportunity to show Carson City's commitment to quality of life, recreation, and economic uh, vitality. I went ahead and um, with the Cultural Commission, we created funding caps for this uh, uh, set amount of allocated funds. Um, I put together a public grant workshop and partnered with our state arts agency, so these local art organizations of ours also had um, access to state monies. Refreshed, working with Lee here, refreshed the online application in response to applicants' comments to make it more user-friendly, more reader-friendly. And then finally, uh, established a transparent scoring rubrics and eligibility guidelines which had not existed before. Um, you'll think that this might be a lot of work for $25,000, but I treat it, and the arts community treats it, as if it was 50, as if it was 150, as if it was a quarter million, okay? So in the staff report, you'll see um, Lee's, um, the, the final recommendations, but what I wanted to put up on the board here was uh, the seriousness that we're taking uh, towards this. So in yellow, you'll see new applications. And how we did this for the first time now is that each commissioner has a scoring uh, rubrics of 30 points. Six topics, 30 points. Um, the, the amount requested, as you can see, is all under $5,000. We add these average scores, top being 30. That turns into a percentage that we feed back into the uh, requested am um, amount. So as you'll see, uh, let's use, for example, Mile High Jazz Band. They requested $5,000. Their score was a 29 which was a 97%. So what is 97% of 5,000? It's, it's this column right here. These recommended amounts we added up, and because we had some, um, some rollover from past years, the total amount available was 32,200. And as you can see, we're, we were at 37. So what I did was I um, created some uh, funding tables. Um, I looked at the trend that we have here. I, uh, we dropped off anything that scored below an 80, re added it up again, and we're still over the amount. This funding uh, table example number two shows what we, um, uh, you have a copy of it, and cop this is a uh, late material, and copies are, have been distributed, and that they, they are at the door if, if it's not on the screen that we see. Uh, the funding example number two was if you scored 100%, meaning 30 points, uh, we would see, uh, we would recommend 100% of your um, requested funding. Um, any score, any, um, if it was 90%, uh, if your score was 90 to 99, you received 90 and, and, and so on down, um, to a point where 
with this recommending scoring chart, we had $2,000 in surplus. So what we did, and this is a, 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 an example that the state used in a uh, grants panel I chaired once, is that whatever we took, whatever we had in remainder, we went to the top high score, and as you would imagine, sort of filled up the glasses as we go down according to the top score until we ran out. That was the process, a two meeting process, that landed us on what we see here printed in the, in the staff report with our um, recommended amounts coming to 32,200. I apologize it's not on the screen. We're having some te technical difficulties here, but um, you have all the cop all the, you have the the new guideline, the I believe it's seven or eight page guideline in front of you, as well as um, the chart I was referring to. So this is something that we want to use going forward. This is transparent. that gives um, applicants an actual knowledge of what they're being graded upon. It um, also gives the, uh, the history of the redevelopment's um, um, allocation of this. It gives a flow chart of how this process works. It gives tips on promotion, whether to submit to a calendar, to buy an ad, information on the LED uh, billboard out here, where to post flyers, where to post on social media. It uh, goes into definition of the CTA um, market at marketing and media package that each applicant will now receive. So there's an equitable amount of exposure across applicants, as well as to a final report that Lee and I are working on. Uh, to make sure that it is seamless on the back end of this. So that's the, the work that um, we've done and it's you know all in hopes and I think I've um, notified you as, we, as we've gone on all this is in hopes to get more you know mileage out of the gas tank and more exposure and help build these um, utilize um, our assets as a prop up for these arts and culture um, organizations so that they can build um, and contribute to our community profile. Are there any questions in any of that material? Go ahead, Lori. So I, I just want to say, very nice job putting a, a procedure actually together to, to help the artist groups. I just have one slight question on page two of your document for the ineligibility. Yes. You stated fundraiser is that being just a fundraiser itself? Because I think when you do ticket sales, you always want to include some towards the profit margin. Right. Well, um, having a, a ticketed event is not doesn't disqualify anyone. The fundraisers, and I'm, I, I touched this topic at the uh, at the grant workshop at the, at the two day grant workshop was that what we really want this money to go towards is creating a, a, an end product. When we put it in the hands of, of a fundraiser, it can get you know, off kilter a bit. And what we really want to have is an end product that's visual arts, music, or theater. A fundraiser theoretically could be to build to get a new roof. So for example, we wouldn't give an organization five grand to have a fundraiser to build a new, group, new roof, even though it's over their stage. That's a real simple example. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify though that any program event is also a fundraiser. I mean, if I'm gonna put on a production and I need whatever, Five dollars of the ticket price for the production, I might charge ten so that we can add five dollars to the bottom line of the organization. And you're not suggesting that they can't set the five dollars of the fund. Right. That, uh, you're not no, making them job cost you. The, I understand that would be spelled out in the grant application. Right. What the I just project wanted to act clarify actually that is. Thank you for that. You should recover a little bit more sure. than the direct cost. Right. <laughs> okay. You know, we do want our artists to be stipend. We do want the organization to make money to continue going forward. Yeah. Um, Mark, I just want to say good work on this. I would echo Lori's comments that uh, it's, it's nice to see the methodology behind what you're doing and setting out, you know, policies that are clear and understandable so that everybody's on the same page and, and, and they know how to plan going forward. Thank you. Any other board comment? I just echo what both of them said. Uh, Brad and Lori have covered it. Having been through the process, this was much more streamlined than it's ever been in the past, so it was great. And I'll add, we actually, I actually got good feedback um, from the applicants themselves. So this was, a, this was a new hurdle for them. I was holding my breath a little bit, but the feedback was very positive across the board. So, 
Any public comment? Anne? <laughs> Anne was there. <laughs> okay. I, I do have one other question, Mark. Um, because the funding methodology is now this clear, do you anticipate that you will see inflated applications in the future to get to the net amount that somebody wanted in the first place? I was brought here to grow the community and its organization. So yeah, I do want to see growth across the board and including our applicant pool. I think with the eligibility requirements and the final reports where they're sending in uh, imagery of what they've done so we can promote it going forward, where they're sending invitations to the board and to the, and the, and to the redevelopment board, um, I'm looking for um, organizations, and we still have some of the, we, we have the usual organizations that usually apply here, but to push the boundaries of what they can offer Carson City in exchange. So I do, I do want to see new applicants, but I do want to see uh, growth from prior applicants. And in fact, one of the eligibility criteria that we put in there, we had massaged the language a bit, was underscoring that um, that there's an intent to develop and evolve the organization. That's one of the scoring criteria. All right, any further board comment? If not, I will ask for a motion on this. You want to make a motion for change? I'm going to do this. I got half of my packet. Okay, I move to approve and recommend the Board of Supervisors authorize the expenditure of $32,200 from the fiscal year 2019 redevelopment revolving fund to support various special events in support of the redevelopment district as represent recommended by the Cultural Commission as an expense incidental to the carrying out of the redevelopment plan that has been adopted by Carson City Board of Supervisors and based upon the findings that there is a causal connection between the, this redevelopment effort and the need for the expenses. The expenses are needed to ensure the success of the redevelopment plan and, and that the amount of the expenses to be given are minor in comparison with the amount of money required for the overall redevelopment plan. Second. All right, see that? We did have a motion in a couple of That's seconds. How you get seconds on all these motions. See that? You know, huh? Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. And thank you again, Mark. And uh, one final public comment. And if not, we'll, we will adjourn the redevelopment authority and I'll turn the gavel back to the mayor. Okay, we're going to reconvene the Board of Supervisors. We'll take up item number 29, Alpha. This is the companion measure to what we just oh, went through. Did we do 29B to adopt the million four for that's, redevelopment? That's under oh, sorry. Sorry. We're on 29A. Yeah. 29A. Sorry. Um, okay. It's a duplicate, right. I might be going off off the rails here, so it's good to keep <laughs> me on the rails. So. All right. Oh, uh, we're going to uh, in, incorporate by reference all the comments uh, and, and information we received under... Uh, item 25 in front of the Redevelopment Authority, uh, and we'll now take up a motion to approve this under the Board of Supervisors. It's Resolution 19. I move to adopt Resolution Number 2018-R19, authorizing the expenditure of $32,200 from the fiscal year 2019 revolving fund of the Redevelopment Authority to support various acts various arts and culture special events in support of the redevelopment district as an expense incidental to the carrying out of the redevelopment plan. There's a motion a couple seconds. On the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Let me see that. There we go. Okay. Good. All right, now we'll take up uh, the million dollar, 1.5. million dollar question. The million dollar question. This is 29 Bravo. This is to adopt a resolution authorizing the expenditure of 1.4 million roughly for, fi for fiscal year 2019 redevelopment revolving fund to support various events and incentives as an expenditure incidental to carrying out the redevelopment plan. Uh, this requires uh, two uh, two thirds uh, vote. Wait a minute here. Yeah, uh, it requires two thirds vote from from our board. So Lee, you want to take us through this? Sure. Good. Good afternoon, Lee Plummel, Community Development Director. For the record, um, these are expenditures that are uh, previously approved by the Redevelopment Authority in the budget. Um, Items in the redevelopment revolving fund require 
approval by the board by resolution of the board of supervisors these are specific items in the budget that don't otherwise require um, an additional approval for specific projects and your approval of the of the resolution allows authorizes the expenditure for these purposes uh, since we're having difficulty here uh, just for anybody listening i'll just read off which ones these are these are for in the budget for nevada day the farmer's market christmas tree lighting epic rides um it says oh that's a resolution need a correction there miss that the 20 it's for the uh 2019 Yep, it's the 2019 Mountain Bike Festival. We'll have Kathy correct that. Uh, 25,000 for special events, street closures, the facade improvement program. So, and, and that one's in here. That does require additional um, approvals for individual, but that's at the RAC. But so the, so the board needs to authorize the expenditure and RAC would approve individual projects on that. We have uh, $200,000 in this budget for the downtown curry street project you may remember 350,000 was already allocated from actually this current current year's budget towards that project and this is the last two hundred thousand um, dollars from next year's budget that will complete the side streets along with curry street uh, two hundred thousand dollars for the south carson street project for enhancements to that project that's that's been approved in the budget then we have the incentives for Michael Hole and Richard Campani, as well as budgeted sales tax incentives, which includes the Southgate Mall and Carson Mall. So those are the items from the budget that you'd be authorizing for expenditures in the next fiscal year. Okay, we got some questions up here. Brad, then John. And the, do you know when we will get a report on the Carson City Off-Road? for this year's event? Um, that's been through, let's see, it's, I know engineering has taken the lead on those in the past. I don't know the, I don't know the timing of that. I mean, we can, we'll, we'll talk to them and give a debrief. And also with, I, and I think in the past, the uh, Culture and Tourism Authority has been part of that presentation with giving some attendance numbers. So I guess we can coordinate with them and, yeah. Yeah. If we could specifically ask for some feedback from Epic Rides on public attendance to this event, because it seemed like attendance was down quite a bit this year, especially at the finish of the races. Um, so I'd just like to get an overall feel from them of what their feedback is on how Carson City is receiving this event. And if they're pleased, because I was down there quite a bit, and it seemed like nobody was at the vendor tents. There was only maybe 20 or 30 people at the finish line of the race cheering the bikers on. And so I'd just like to get some feedback from them. I just want to make sure that if this is an event that Carson City would like to continue with, that we're doing our part to promote it and make sure that we get our citizens down there to participate. There was a huge neighborhood party up in my area of town. I mean, they were sitting, we were... I mean, we weren't downtown, but I mean, there was a lot of neighborhood neighborhood in, in interest in it. I mean, they were all anyway. A lot yeah, of bills. It, it'll be interesting to see but, what they say on the economic impacts if yeah, they have be that, because you know we've been told that there's more riders this year, so so there should be more people in town, and so hopefully that's translating to more people in the restaurants and and those. Sorts well, I agree of with Brad. We we ought to find out what Epic yeah. Rides thinks, because yep, you know. It was also nice this time, and I know I'll get to, John's got a question here. You know, when Epic Rides came here, the, the governor actually came and welcomed to Carson City. That's a big deal. Nice deal. Okay, so sorry, John, I'm, I apologize. Go. No, not a problem. I just would like uh, Lee to remind us when these uh, larger amounts um, run out, what, what years uh, for like the hole and the, and the uh, et cetera. Do you have that? The Michael Hull payment, I think there's just one, actually might have it here. Yeah, there's one more payment of like 58000 for fiscal 2020. So there's a $480,000 payment in 19 and then 58000 in 2020. I don't remember when the Campani... Well, some of the, some of the Carson Mall incentive should fall off in probably the next five years too, right? Yeah. From about two. 
Oh, only Michael Holt comes in soon. Okay. Yeah, well, we should, I just want a, a reminder of that because we might want to start thinking in out well, years what we're going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and you know, that's that's another half million dollars to when that expires. You know, another thing that I didn't realize, and, uh, the the nursing facility, the skilled facility up there that's being built next to the hospital, mm -hmm. that huge building, that's redevelopment. Yes. All those property taxes go to redevelopment, yep. not to us, not, right. not, to, the, not to the board, not to the, board. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, not to the general fund. All right. I got a couple more lights here. Who's next? Lori and then Brad? Okay, go. Um, so can you tell me, because right now we're still putting in 160000 in the projection model, do we have a new vendor for the Carson Mall? Are we anticipating something there? I don't think that was factored into the projection because I think the projection was based on past numbers, so it could be less than that because we don't have any plans in or haven't had anybody come to community development at least about filling that, refilling that space. Okay. So, I mean, we could authorize money there, but it may drop out a little. The, okay. the amount that gets paid is going to be based on actual right. sales Receipts. tax. So, yeah, this is an estimate from finance. Okay. So and no based on past experience, based on the last few years of experience. So no, ma <laughs> I can open a sub shop. So nothing in the Bell's location. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to remind the board that what we're calling the Michael Hole uh, incentive is not going to Michael Hole. That's going for redevelopment to the general fund. So there's no net savings when that runs out. We're putting a four hundred eighty thousand dollar hole in the general fund budget when that runs out. Yeah, so th there's no savings there. To redevelopment there is, but not overall. Paper, it's called paper money or whatever, the pho phony money. All right, all right. Any public comment on this issue? Wet water. Wet water. <laughs> all right. All right. Anybody else on the board? There's no public comment. Motion's in order. Uh, somebody wanted to go to try. Want me to try it? Yeah. All right. I move to adopt resolution number 2019R20, authorizing the expenditure of $1,418,787 from the fiscal year 2019 redevelopment revolving fund to support various events and incentives as an expenditure incidental to the carrying out of the redevelopment plan. 2018 or 19? 2018. 18, I'm sorry. Uh, so resolution 2018 R20. There's a motion and a second on the motion. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, carried. All right, now we, uh, so for those who are listening, we uh, postponed. The law for the matter, that's 29C and D, so we're now done with this afternoon session. I don't have concluding public comment until later tonight. Okay, uh, we'll just ask anybody on public comment before we adjourn till 6 o'clock? Are we ready to adjourn then? Recessing. Recessing, excuse me. Recessing. <laughs> I got them on both sides. Check with legal. <laughs> Check with legal. <laughs> and don't let them try that little exercise, you know, on the one hand, on the other hand. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's the lawyer's favorite way out. On the one hand, this, and on the other hand, that. You know, so you never have to give an answer. And then there's the learned hand. Then there's the oh, learned oh, hand. Yeah. Oh, We're boy. We're getting some good nicknames going on. <laughs> All right. Hearing no objection, we're in recess until 6 o'clock tonight.